0.2 factoring review. So let's recall the exponent laws. So the product law for exponents is when we multiply two powers that have the same base. So for example, the base would be x here, and then the powers would be a and b. What we do is we keep the base and we add the exponents. Okay, so keep the base, add the exponents. Okay, quotient law. When we divide two powers that have the same base, so again, x and x, same base, what we do to the exponents is we keep the base and we subtract the exponents. Okay, these two are gonna be very, very commonly used when we're doing factoring. And just a recap of what factoring is, is when factoring a polynomial is the opposite of expanding, okay? So factoring is the process of writing a polynomial as a product of two or more polynomials. So this would be one polynomial, this would be two polynomials, and going this way, we would expand, right? Or if we had x squared plus 2x, going this way, we would factor and pull out that x. The first type of factoring we're going to look at is common factoring. So I just wanted to find the greatest common factor. So what is that? Well, the greatest common factor, and we also write GCF as a short form, is the number is the largest number and or variable that divides evenly into each term of the polynomial. Okay, so here are some steps to remember when we're common factoring. So first we need to find the greatest common factor. Then we need to divide each term of the polynomial by the greatest common factor to find a second factor. The second factor is like leftovers. Okay, and then we write the polynomial as the product, so product again multiplication, of the greatest common factor and the second factor. So the expanded polynomial will equal the greatest common factor times whatever those leftovers were or the second factor okay and then you can always check your answer by expanding because remember factoring and expanding are opposites of one another so you can always check your answer all right example two common factor the following so when we take a look at 6n cubed plus 3n, I'm looking at the numbers first, okay? What numbers can multiply or divide? Uh, 6 has to divide by it and 3 has to divide by it. So the greatest common factor is going to be 3, right? Because 6 can divide by 3 and 3 can also divide by 3. And then when I take a look at n cubed or n, so here's a little note that you guys want to jot down. Um, pull out or factor out. You can say pull out the lowest exponent. That is common. Okay, what does that mean? So we can see here that we have an n and the n is common. We have an exponent 3 and exponent 1. So we're going to pull out that n to the 1. So 3n is going to be our greatest common factor. We write 3n in the beginning, and then we write what's left over in the bracket. Okay, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. n cubed divided by n to the 1. Um, if you remember from above our exponent laws, 3 minus 1, we are left with n squared. Now, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and n divided by n is 1. So this is going to be plus 1. Okay, for b, we have a trinomial. We have 5x squared plus 10x plus 50. So what does 5x squared plus 10x plus 50 all divide by? So I can see that 5, 10, and 50 divide by 5. So we're going to divide each of these terms by 5. And now we have an x squared and x 
but there's no x on that third term, so we don't include x. It has to be, that, that variable has to be common in each one of these terms. So, write the greatest common factor on the outside, and now divide. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so we're left with x squared. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so we're left with 2x. And 50 divided by 5 is 10. Factoring by grouping. So to factor by grouping, uh, there are four steps. So group the two terms together that share a common factor. Okay, it's usually like simply if, if they're in order, if terms are in order, usually this is the first two terms. So the first and second term in a bracket, and then the third and fourth term in another bracket. Okay, and I'll show you guys that. Okay, common factor each of these smaller expressions. So you common factor the first two, and then you common factor separately the second two. Okay, and if you did this step right, you we should have the same binomial in brackets, and then we common factor one more time to pull the binomial out. Okay, or factor the binomial out. And then again, you can check your answer by expanding and simplifying. Okay, so let's do these ones, factor by grouping. So for the first one, let's bracket the first two terms, bracket the second two terms. Okay, I noticed right away that these are in order. It's x cubed, then x squared, then x, then constant. So this one should work directly. So what can we factor out of x cubed and 3x squared? Well, x cubed doesn't have a coefficient, like the coefficient's 1, so we're not going to have a greatest common factor with a coefficient. Um, and then our rule is, if they both have x's in them, divide by the lowest common exponent. So we're going to divide by x squared. So x squared, bracket, x cubed divided by x squared gives us an x. And 3x squared divided by x squared, those would cancel out. And we're left with plus 3. Okay, so that one is x squared. So for the second bracket, the greatest common factor of 2x plus 6, well, we can divide both of these by 2, and that's it, because 6 doesn't have an x in it. So our greatest common factor goes here, plus 2, and then whatever's left over goes in this bracket. So 2x divided by 2, those cancel, and we get x. 6 divided by 2, we get 3. Okay, so we've done steps 1 and 2. And now if we take a look at these two terms, our binomial in brackets is the same. And that's exactly what we want. So our common factor in this case is going to be the bracket x plus 3. So your greatest common factor when we have when we start with four terms and we're doing factor by grouping is likely going to be a binomial. Okay? So, I'm going to bring the greatest common factor out first, x plus 3. Maybe have equal signs. And then what's left over? Well, if we divide x squared x plus 3 divided by x plus 3, the x plus 3s cancel and we're left with x squared. And if we divide this whole term by x plus 3, again, the x plus 3s cancel, and we get plus 2. Okay, B. Uh, 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus x minus 2. So, step 1, bracket the first two terms, bracket the second two terms. Okay, these brackets do not mean that they're multiplied by one another. We're just kind of like organizing. Okay, now we want to divide by the greatest common factor. So, of 2 and 4, our greatest common factor is 2. And of x cubed and x squared, we are going to use the x squared, the lower exponent. 
So 2x squared, 2x squared. So we're going to bring the greatest common factor in front, which is 2x squared, and we're going to put the leftovers in the bracket. So the 2s cancel out. The x cubed divided by x squared leaves us an x. Now the 4 and the 2 cancel to a 2, and the x squares cancel out completely. Okay, so we get 2x squared, x plus 2. Okay, now in the second one, the greatest common factor of negative x minus 2 is actually going to be negative 1. Okay, whenever there is a negative in this position, you always want to divide it out. So we get negative 1, and then we negate negative x, it becomes x, and negative 2 becomes positive 2. Okay. And at this point, we see that the two uh, brackets are both x plus 2, so that's what we're going to divide by. Our greatest common factor here is going to be x plus 2, and then we're going to have x plus 2, and what's left over? After we cancel those out, we have a 2x squared. And after we cancel those out, we have a negative 1. Okay, simple trinomials. This is like the product sum method. So what we're going to do is this occurs when we have a trinomial in the form x, like 1x squared plus a coefficient. So like some bx and then some constant c. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to actually write two empty sets of brackets and we're going to put the, the first term in the bracket must multiply together to get this first term. So a lot of the times it's just going to be x because x times x is x squared. Okay, um, just as an example. Now the second term is going to change. So the second term in each bracket, it must fulfill these two requirements. It must multiply to C, and it must add to B. So what we're going to do is we're going to take C, and we're going to list the factors. And then we're going to see which ones multiply to C, add to B, and then what we're going to do with those two numbers is like put them in here. So plus, I don't know, R plus S. Okay, whatever those two numbers are, or minus R minus S. Okay. And then step four, again, you can check your answer by expanding and simplifying. So let's actually do this now. So we have x squared minus x minus 30. So what we're going to do is we know x times x is going to be x squared. So our brackets are going to start with an x in that binomial. Okay, now we have to find numbers that multiply to negative 30. So I'm going to write the number 30. Don't worry about the negative for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and write factors of 30. Okay, and I'm going to write them beside each other. So don't just be like 1, 2, 3, whatever. Like go 1 times 30, 2 times 15, uh, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Okay, and the reason why we want to put them beside each other is because now we want to see what combination of these adds to negative 1. So remember, the 30 originally had a negative on it. So if we subtracted these numbers, the difference between 5 and 6 is definitely 1. Okay, so the difference has to be negative 1. So that means that I'm going to put my negative sign on the 6 because 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So this is going to take on the plus 5, and this is going to take on the negative 6. And that's our factor form, x plus 5, x minus 6. Okay, now for b, x squared plus 4x plus 4. I'm going to start with those two brackets. And I'm going to write an x, because x times x is x squared. Now, I'm going to take the 4, and I'm going to find factors of 4. So this is a small number, so it's easy. 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Now, which two numbers add up to 4? Well, 2 and 2 do. So my factors are going to be x plus 2 
x plus 2. And if you want to simplify this a little bit more, we can write x plus 2 squared. Okay, the next factoring that we're going to look at is complex trinomials. Okay, I call this decomposition. So factoring trinomials of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So the difference between this and product sum is that our a value is not going to equal 1 this time. It's going to equal any other number except for 1. Okay, so when we take a look at the word decomposition, um, I think of the word decompose. Okay, and in English, this just means to like break down. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be break, breaking down that middle term. Okay, so it's kind of the same theme as product sum, just a little, one extra step. Okay, so we're going to find two numbers that add to B. So same step as before. So add to that middle number. But this time, we're not only going to find factors that multiply to C. We're going to find factors that multiply to like AC. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, and we're going to rewrite the middle term of the trinomial using two numbers found in step one. Okay, so these two numbers. And then we're going to factor by grouping, which we've seen. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow those steps. Okay, factor using decomposition. So for A, we have 10x squared minus x minus 3. We can see here that the coefficient is not 1, so we're going to go ahead and multiply a times c, which is negative 30. I'm going to find all the factors of negative 30. Okay, by the way, I completely disregard the negative sign for right now. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. And then, we want to take a look at the b value. So the b value is negative 1. Which two numbers are going to add or subtract to negative 1? Well, the difference of 5 and 6 is negative 1. And I'm going to put the negative on the 6. Because 5 minus 6 equals negative 1. So I'm going to, step 2, rewrite this middle term as plus 5x minus 6x. And now we're just going to factor by grouping. So group the first two terms, group the second two terms. What can I factor out of the first two terms? A 5x. What can I factor out of the second two terms? A negative 3. And remember, if this is a negative sign here, you always want to pull it out. So when the first two terms are divided by 5x, we're left with 2x plus 1. And when the second two terms are divided by negative 3, we're left with 2x plus 1. At this point, these two terms should have the same numbers in the bracket. We should have the same binomial. So we're going to divide both of these by 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 1 is going to be our common factor. And then what's left over? 5x. And what's left over here? Negative 3. Okay, for example, b, uh, we have 2x squared minus x minus 3. So let's multiply the first and last terms, which is our ac. So we're going to find two numbers that multiply to negative 6. Okay, I'm going to list the factors of negative 6. I get 1, 6, 2, and 3. Okay, at, that, at the point where we're multiplying two numbers, disregard the negative sign. And then consider it when we have to think of the two numbers that add or subtract to negative 1. So in this case, 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. So let's do decomposition. We're going to break down that middle number. So the 2x squared stays and the negative 3 stays as it is. This middle number changes to plus 2x minus 3x. And then we do 
Factor by grouping three times. So bracket the first two terms, bracket the second two terms, and divide out. So we can divide the first two terms by 2x and the second two terms by negative 3. We're left with 2x, x plus 1, oops, negative 3, x plus 1. So we just did common factoring twice. Now we common factor a third time. We divide out the x plus 1. We bring the common factor here, x plus 1. And we get 2x minus 3. And that is now fully factored. Difference of squares, this is another factoring style. So it's going to be in the form a squared minus b squared. Okay, how are you going to recognize this? There are two terms, term 1, term 2. Both of these terms are perfect squares. What that means is that you can root it. You can, uh, you can say square root it. Okay, the other thing is the sign between the two terms is subtraction. If this is a plus sign, you can't do it. It must be subtraction. That's why it's called difference of squares. Okay, and then how we factor this is we are going to create two brackets and then simply you root the first term and you put it as the first term in both brackets and then you and then you fill one bracket with the minus sign one bracket with the plus sign and then you write the root of the second term okay and then that's it. So here we go. Factor the following difference of squares. So we have x squared. Well, what's root of x squared? It's just x. And then we have a 9. What's the root of 9? Well, it's just 3. So we have our two brackets and we fill it in with x minus 3, x plus 3. And that's it. For the second one, I notice right away that I can factor out a 2. So I'm going to common factor out a 2, and we're left with x squared minus 100. Well, x squared minus 100 is definitely a difference of squares. So the x squared roots to x, and then 100 roots to 10. So I'm going to bring down the 2, and then I'm going to write two brackets x minus 10, x plus 10. So overall, here's the algorithm for factoring. Okay, you always want to start with common factoring. Always. So this is the start. Common factor out whatever you can. Make those terms as simple as possible to work with. Then after that, you have to determine how, like, what's the number of terms that I have. You either have two terms, three terms, or four terms. So with two terms, after you've common factored, you want to just check if it's difference of squares. If it is, then factor it. With three terms, you have to check if it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and then there's one of two options. We're either going to product sum this, if that coefficient of a is 1, okay, or if the coefficient of a is not 1, we're going to use decomposition, okay, and then if the number of terms is 4, you got to check if factor by grouping will work and use that.